Well, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Latoria, and I'm excited about this first episode of Something to Talk About. And what better way to kick off the series than to chat about seeing the world? Now, if you grab a map and pick a random country, more than likely my guest today has been there. He's a globalist, social entrepreneur, entrepreneur, and travel extraordinaire. And he's here to give us tips and insight on being a conscious traveler. Dot, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. I feel like we're just getting started, but there's not enough time. So um, I, I'm excited to kick off the conversation. We'll start with having you give uh, the folks at home a synopsis of your work as a globalist. You know, I, it, it's an interesting way you put it. I think of a globalist as sort of like more of a philosophy of life rather than any work. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I think I was always, in my, in my mind, a globalist long before I did any work that took me all over the world. And what I might mean, what I meant, what I mean by that is that, mm -hmm. as, a, as a globalist, to me, it means like this constant push to sort of like stretch what's in here and try to map it and try to make it as big as the world that's really out there, and that's what I think of. So, like I said, when I got to the place where I started working, uh, my mind was already going in that direction. So that's what that's that's what for me that's what it means to sort of like be a globalist. It's really kind of embracing a way you look at the world, the way you embrace life, and how you want to interact with that world. And so the folks at home have a little detail. Um, what, what are, what's some of the work you do, like in the day-to-day, -day, maybe just like a quick one-liner, if, if, if we were interested in being a globalist, where would we go, uh, how would we affect community? Well, I think sometimes like we, the interesting thing about being a globalist is like sometimes it requires you to know a lot about where you are mm -hmm. locally. And what I mean by that is like that's how it starts. It's a really a mindset to look at everything with a certain sense of curiosity, including okay right next door, right? Sometimes we know about our community, but we really, unless we consciously make the effort, we don't go out beyond that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think starting with simply knowing what's around you creates an opportunity to eventually going up further and further. So it doesn't have to take you to far-flung places, right. right? It could be seeing something, seeing a neighborhood uh, right next door. Uh, when I first came to DC, that's what I used to do. I lived in Adams Morgan, but I would just start walking and go to Columbia Heights, go to Mount Pleasant. And for me, that's all part of living life as a globalist. Mm -hmm. Always like kind of let the curiosity play out you wherever mean, you are. Not, not using the GPS, right? Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> like I do. Yeah. I'm always in the GPS, but just having that ability to wander. And I like that because it's saying you don't have to necessarily pick up and pack a bag and, and, and go to another country. There's, there's places to explore right around you outside of your own four walls, which actually leads to my next question. Why is it important to step out of our comfort zone, out of our own four walls? You know, that, that's, uh, th that's a good question. I've spent a lot of time like, thinking about this, just mm -hmm. naturally, just be, for someone who likes to travel. So let's put it this way. Think of it as this way. If, you, if you're in a phone booth, it's probably a little hard to sort of like reflect, right? Because that's all you have is that space. Mm -hmm. Now, you, if you expand that phone booth to even a studio like this or something bigger, all of a sudden, your ability to step outside of yourself, mm. right? And take that focus away from self, it's easier to think about others, right? Because you observe people, you see, you're able to see how they interact with the environment they're in, right? So the more that you can push these four walls away and, and make it bigger and bigger, I think the more it simply makes life interesting. And for me, it's like gaining extra eyes. Yeah. Right? So you, you see all these people and you see how they interact with the environment. You gain these extra eyes and these expert, these uh, perspectives. Yeah. Right? And to me, that's the interesting part about life. It's like being able to do that. All of a sudden, you take the focus away from you mm -hmm. because you're able to see what others. And I think, you know, that brings to, some, bring to, brings to something else, which is, that's really, if you think about it, that's what really empathy is about, right? Right, right. And, it, and we know that all the successful people in life, no matter what sort of work they do, they always have a sense of solving, whether it's solving a problem or trying to understand something, they always do it through somebody else's eyes, right? And the more you can do it, I think the better you're gonna be, uh, the more interesting you're gonna be uh, in terms of as a learner, as well as being a, a better problem solver uh, for others. It makes sense in how it builds the person. So let's give the folks at home an idea of how to do that, um, kind of exploring a culture or 
something that's that's not your norm, but in your but close to your own space? Is that going to uh, a, a restaurant? Is it going to a festival? Um, can we give folks maybe one or two ideas of, of how to just step into another neighborhood and explore, see something different? Yeah, you know, sometimes like sometimes like we we tend to overthink this a little bit. Right. I think, that, right? Yes. And for me, <laughs> there there are a few so things it, that yeah. we can do. Okay. Right? And it could be as simple as simply being be more of an active observer. Hmm, what right? does that mean? So that means that really sort of like turn on all your senses, okay. right? So when, okay. when, when you go to an unfam unfamiliar place, I think so like a natural tendency and the natural reaction, at least for me, I find, and I've talked to a lot of people who've traveled and they share this as well, is that you're much more alert, right? Here, if you're out and about going to work, going out on a weekend, you're on the train, right. you probably, it's such a routine. Yeah, you right? put your headphones yeah. in, you're reading your book. Exactly, you don't right. even think about it. Right. right. But the moment you consciously tell yourself like, well, I'm gonna be more observant. I'm just gonna watch, mm -hmm. right? Because all the little things that seem sort of mundane become interesting. So, and, and so when you ask like, what can you do? Mm -hmm. One of the things that on my list, and it's different for everyone, Wherever I go, one of the first thing, one of the things I always do is I go to a market. Any old market, it could be indoor, outdoor, it makes no difference. Mm -hmm. I just went around, and for me, why? Because I'm just being to see what sort of items on the shelf, what sort of prices there are, and how people go around, a mundane things like shopping. That tells me a lot about that environment, mm -hmm. right? Because as I said, travel is really not about a physical space. It's really that whole environment that's interesting. And if you look at the way we are as human beings, well, we have eyes, we have ears, we have a mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's not just what people say, not what they, what, they, uh, what they see, but maybe what they smell or what they might even be thinking, right? Which is sense. something that's interesting, but we don't know, right? Right, right. But all of those senses make the experience what it is. I love that. So we'll challenge the folks at home, especially here in the DMV, find a um, an event. Maybe it's a, a marketplace event or something related to a different culture. It is your homework to give that a try. Before we go to a break, uh, just a quick question here for you. Of all the places you've lived and traveled, what was your favorite? Quick answer. <laughs> I don't have a favorite, but a place that was special to me because of a certain time in my life is Costa Rica. All right. We'll because, get... yeah, and then and I, I can share more when we come back. That sounds perfect. More with Dot right after this. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Well, welcome back. We're talking with globalist and travel expert Dot Tran about all the things you need to know before you book your next flight. So Dot, before we went to break, you were telling us your favorite uh, place to, uh, that you've lived was Costa Rica. Yeah, and like I guess it was it was such a special time in my life. I was a I was a college student, uh, and and of course me personally having been like an immigrant kid, mm -hmm. right? I came to to the states when I was young, and then that was the first time I got to get out again, and to be there for one solid block of six months. Yeah, where I pledged to myself the day that I arrived that I would not speak English until the time until the day I leave. So I spent the six months living with this family, going out, interact with daily life like a person who lives there, yeah, like a real yeah. local resident. Fully immersed in, in, in the culture. Yeah, and started dreaming in Spanish, which my host mother had <laughs> sort of like forecasted, which is sort of amazing. She said, you know how you know when you start to I've be fluent? <laughs> when you start dreaming when in Spanish. When you start dreaming in Spanish, and yeah. And sure enough, within a month, I started doing that. So th that part of my life, it's just because of the timing, because of the uniqueness of the place, and that wonderful family and, the, and that, that country, um, it remains like a very special place in, uh, for me. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I do wanna lean on your expertise and get into some um, trending topics that I think uh, folks at home will wanna hear about. One being how the world greets uh, women who travel solo. Because of course, um, 
ladies getting out, taking their own trips alone. It, it is on the rise. In fact, I have a, um, a data stat here. It says a 2018 global survey by British Airways of 9,000 women found that more than 50% had already taken a solo vacation, with 75% of women planning to do so in the coming years. This coming from the New York Times. Um, now, with this, of course, it's exciting to hear folks getting out and not waiting until they're married or a group of friends hits the road to travel. Um, plus, I hear I haven't done it yet. It's on my bucket list, folks. Um, but uh, folks are getting out and they are traveling. How can women be prepared and not afraid to take a solo trip, aside from the headlines that we hear? Well, first, I'm, I'm, I think it's actually for me that's very exciting that yeah. people are doing this because I, I have traveled as a, you know by myself as well. But obviously, I can't speak from a woman's perspective, but I can speak from a traveler's perspective. I think one of the things that we, uh, that I would suggest is that really be aware mm. and do your homework before you go to some place, right? Just don't pick a place just because it's somebody- on Instagram. Exactly. <laughs> somebody on social media said, oh, this is a fun place to go. Exactly. As a traveler, to really get the most out of it, so like really learn as much, of, it's important to learn as much about the history of that place as much as it is about the current life in that place. Yeah. Because those are kind of things that as you, as you learn about them, you build in a sense of awareness, right, right, right? In terms of what you can and what you should or maybe shouldn't do, mm -hmm. right? And that goes to speak to some of the key things, which is security, right? right That's a concern right. for every woman, a woman traveler and rightfully so. So there are places where you can do certain things, like let's say, go out in public places, walk around parks, right? Mm -hmm. And you know there won't be any problem. For other places, maybe you can, but you don't do it at a certain time of the day, right? But also at the same time, beyond the environment, like I said, it's about the environment, right? right Just knowing right. how people, that culture, how people treat women, how they, how women in their own society, uh, their roles and how they interact with others, especially men. Right, right. Uh, these are sense. all the things that are, that will seep in right. as you take the time to understand because like I said, through that awareness and through learning about that environment, you, that yeah. awareness becomes much more heightened and it gives you the preparation you need, right? If and you I, get the history, you understand the culture and then they're thus the people. Yeah, exactly. And that can affect your street smarts and how you move around. Yeah, so there's a process how we can think about that rather than simply thinking about, is it safe to go there? Correct. Is it safe to go right. there? And then, That's, of course, you yeah. take the, the typical safety uh, uh, precautions and measurements that you know going out during the day, uh, maybe staying in a hotel versus an Airbnb, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, and, 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 then I w and then I would add this, which is that there's no quick answer. Yeah. Everybody has a certain level of risk that they can tolerate. You have to know what yours is. Yeah. But to do that, the more you know in terms of information the more the, about the culture of that place, the better off you are. I appreciate that. Let's segue. Um, time is so far spent, but I don't want the show to wrap up without getting uh, some brief insight on you uh, from you on this. Instagramming Africa became a very popular hashtag. Uh, you had model um, Sheena Donia, uh, who was in Benin. She did a photo shoot, and uh, the court of public opinion folks online, some were in support of her. She created a lot of controversy. A lot of folks were against the picture based off of the faces of the folks in the background. I showed you that image before you came. What are, what's your thoughts on this concept of probably, possibly people being used as props? Uh, wrap us up with your answer. No, I think, that, I think that's a tough one. Uh, and, I don't, and I wouldn't pretend that there is a right or wrong answer, because mm -hmm. it very much depends on perspective. Just simple advice, what would you say? I personally do not take pictures of people directly. Okay. Right? If I, if I want to take something, I do it from afar. Right. Because I want to see something that reminds me about where I was. But the people in the back, to me, those, you run the risk, no matter what your intention is, of like using people's props. Yeah. And that's yeah. almost the antithesis of what travel's about. So yeah. I don't do that. Uh, and I wouldn't recommend people doing that. So word to the wise, take your photos, but respect the people, the locals there. We'll have to bring you back, Dot. Thank you so much for your expertise. Uh, to keep up with Dot, you can find him on LinkedIn. We're gonna have his information on the screen. Thank you for tuning, tuning in. I will see you next time on Something to Talk About.